How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, we got some really cool stuff coming up. This is a 1949. It is a Studebaker. It is an R15. It is a one ton truck. We're going to keep in the traditional style of a one ton truck. We're going to get rid of the straight axle that comes on the front of this. We're going to update to some disc brakes. We're going to update to a newer style rear end and a drivetrain, small black Chevrolet, Turbo 400. Came out of a camper that we bought previously. And this is the result of it. This is a G30. It is an 86. It is the Chevy van front end. The beauty of this is it's basically kind of a unibody type frame. And this whole cross member and the whole shebang here, it all pulls off and unbolts. So it's a great donor for this truck. It's a little bit wider. We're going to make some accommodations for that. We bag this. I'll throw a little bit of a video in there of this getting bagged. It's nothing too crazy. It's just a pretty simple bag procedure. And uh, we're going to take this and we're going to put it onto this. We're probably going to end up notching the frame. We're going to have this truck, we're going to get it as low as it will go. Um, we're going to do a four link in the back. This is going to be a manual air ride. We're going to come up with our own style of valves. Uh, stuff that's you know, very easily bought. We're going to do this on the cheap, as, as cheap as possible. We're going to use some basic can tools. I do have some fancier tools. We're probably going to use some of them too. Not everybody has them, but there's always a workaround. Whatever I can do with some of my fancier tools, you could do with next to nothing. I can show you guys some of that stuff, how to do with next to nothing. So this is the very first video of this. I'm very excited about this truck. We actually named her Dolores. Um, she's just an old girl. And uh, she's got good bones, not a lot of rust. Was found 11 miles from my house. Uh, made a deal with the guy who was on Facebook Marketplace, went over there, bought it, talked to the guy and actually delivered it to my house. And it's, it's pretty rust free. I mean, it's originally from Nebraska, somehow ended up in Maine, somehow ended up in Pioneer, Ohio, and ended up now here in Montpelier at my place so do me a favor go ahead subscribe hit that like button you know, share comment do all the things that YouTube asks you to do and let's get at it Alright, so we'll do a little walk around. So, this is actually a really clean truck. I'll show you inside the cab. So, the floor is all intact. Probably about the worst thing about this truck is going to be this rocker. And it's not horrible. Um, you know, it needs a little bit of love. This looks like an old patch. Or something, maybe. I don't, I mean, it just looks different from there to there, but... So either that or that rotted off. Hell, I don't know. So it's going to need a little bit of love here. Cab corners are, you know, just getting a little bit of a bubble on them. But, I mean, for being in Ohio, this thing's great. We're probably going to leave all this original patina. I mean, once they're like this, you can't really, I mean, you can't, you can fake it, but it ain't the same. Uh, I have not decided whether I want to chop this truck or not. We may do a chop top. We may leave it the way it is. We'll just see how it goes. But as you can see, even on the frame, like, I mean, it's just surface rust. Um, this has recently got a, a little bit of fresh rust on it because I power washed it. I would say the worst part about this whole truck it's gonna be this side we got definitely some we got a hole and we got some rocker issues which is no big deal we can literally make any of that it's super super not complicated got oh see a little bit of a hole right there I didn't notice before so no big deal we can patch all that in uh, Gonna leave the original patina. 
I like the door panels the way they are. This truck has no windows in it other than, you know, the got one side glass, a front windshield and a rear window. No, no side glass. Front fenders. Uh, it looks to me like somebody was starting to do a little bit of body work on this. And I mean, I, I'm not sure where the blue paint came from. Uh, this might be primer. I, I don't know, but it looks cool and I'm gonna leave it. I'm not doing really anything with the paint. So we're gonna get rid of this big old freaking Spicer rear end. Originally this truck, uh, back in 49, cause it was a one ton, it had a flat six called the Champion Six. And literally four speed, non-synchro type transmission. Not a real good design. This truck did about 45 mile an hour top speed. So we're gonna run updated drivetrain. It's actually gonna be out of the G30 camper special. We call it the meth wagon. We bought it off some tweakers over in Michigan. This is 1986 Chevy van camper. She's a real gem. And I mean, we'll see what happens. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do today, today is a new day. It's been a long weekend, it's Labor Day weekend. Yesterday was my wife and I's wedding anniversary. We've been married seven years. We throw an annual party every year. We have lots of guests, lots of people. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna get this thing up on jack stands. All four corners, we're gonna get the wheels off front and back we're going to do some measuring and we're going to graph this front end this front cross member it's off a g30 van it's an 86 it was the camper it was the meth wagon we we've, we've talked about this before so we're going to get it up in the air we're going to do some measuring and we're going to get this straight axle off here and we're just going to set it on there it's really we're just going to test fit it and we're going to air it out and we're just going to see how low it'll go. I mean, we might take and put the ass in on the ground, maybe on some blocks, just see how low we can get it. Because what we think is going to have to happen is we're actually going to have to notch this frame up so that that cross member will sit lower up into this frame so that when we air it out, we can actually lay the frame on the ground. So let's get at it. Great jack on the planet makes this noise. Every single damn one.
Okay, so I'm what they call a Polish redneck. No idea is stupid if it works. So, we got a ton of these little jacks. And I'm gonna stick this jack in between here. We're gonna try to pry this off. So, this might work, or it might look like a jack. Tell you what. Nothing is a dumb idea as long as it's safe and it works. Now that right there is more unsafe than what I just did with that jack. So ha, let's do it on the other side. I could have beat the hell out of that with a hammer. There's all sorts of different ways, but look how simple that was. Bada boom, bada bang. Tires off. Safely. Nobody got hurt. Nobody got no fingers pinched. All right, so today's a new day. It is Monday. It's Labor Day. Uh, I'm trying to get used to this whole YouTube thing. This isn't something that comes very natural to me, so I know sometimes I sound very monotone. I realize that I'm pretty entertaining, but I'm also very inappropriate, so like most of my entertainment is pretty, it's definitely not PG-13, so I'm trying to kind of cheat this channel. You know, I'm pretty much PG-13 so that everybody can enjoy it. You can watch it with your kids and whatever and whatnot. And, you know, not be like, dang, this guy cusses a lot, or... So, today's a new day, let's get at it. Okay, so what's on today's agenda is... So we're gonna go ahead... We're gonna cut these braces out. Get rid of this trans brake, or a transmission bracket, my bad. We're gonna get rid of the pedal assemblies. And then we're going to take this, we're going to mark it out, we're going to find our center on the frame here, we'll mark it, and then we'll go ahead and we'll take this straight axle off, push it off to the side, and then we'll roll this G30 van underneath, and we'll see how it fits. So, I know that this is a little bit wider, and that's okay, we're just going to set it in there. And we're going to air it out and just see how low it gets and then decide whether how much we need to notch this to come up and down, clear the steering, clear whatever. I mean, we may end up taking it and completely, you know, build like a front notch, kind of like what they would do with the rear with four link. I thought about Z in it. But the, the beauty of notching it is we don't have to change anything where the, the, the way the fenders mount to the front and everything. You can actually keep a lot of that stuff. So you're actually saving yourself a ton of work. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to unbolt some stuff and uh, we're going to chop off some rivets and pull out some pedal assemblies and just see what we can do to get this thing done. 
So we got this area all cleaned up. Pedals are out of there. All that lovely stuff. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull this, we're gonna measure. I'll show you guys how to measure. This is how I do it. Not everybody does it this way. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this, mark it all up, and then we're gonna pull that straight axle out of there. Okay, so here's how I do it. I take just a simple washer that I found. This actually came off the truck. This is the kingpin. So we're gonna eye it. And that's gonna be our center. Now, when we measure off of this as being center, the other thing that's going to happen is once we get the new front cross member in there and everything, we're going to put the fenders on it. We're going to visually look at it, make sure that it's lined up. This right here is going to get us really, really close. Now it's going to be a completely different style of measurement once we do it on the actual A-frame style. But right here, I mean, that's easy peasy. I mean, it just, it's, it's, it's simple. And it works. So we're going to go ahead and do the other side. Super simple. Basically we're eyeing it. And that's, that's going to get you really, 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 really close. Because your king pen is, I mean, that's going to be center. So, uh, if you, if there's a better way to do it. I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a hundred different ways to do it, but this is the way that I do it. So, you can use information or you can, you know, you can say I'm wrong. <laughs> that's okay. So, this is a piece of. This is half inch square stock. You can use round, you can use half. I prefer square because it'll sit flat on the frame. So you want to get your plumb bob. You want to get it eh, close in height. What I found out works the best is you get your little baby zip tie. And This way I can adjust my height wherever I want it. So I want this to be up just enough. And then I can tighten up my zip tie. And the beauty of this is I can change it. I can move it up and down on my height if I want. So That's really close. So then we just do the other side. You can get a plumb bob, any, pretty much any hardware store. Most people got these at their houses. So then we just go ahead and do the other side. Best to me, it looks it is about the best, cheapest way to do it, really. We're all about. Not necessarily being cheap, but we'll call it frugal. Yeah, that's right. Frugal. So. Get this close. Really close. Then we'll line them both up. So what we want to do is we want to line these up as best as we can. Just a little at a time. 
and it's really nice. All right, folks, so there you have it. Just piece of flat stock, it could be square stock, and then two plumb bobs, and you got it. I mean, that, so pretty much I come in here and I do this. I'm gonna say, all right, well, there's my mark, there's my mark. Mark these a couple of times. Then we measure in between there and bam, we got our center line. Now we can also use this plumb bob set up for when we put the other one in. So there we got it. So we pull this up out of the way. There's our marks. Measure in between those two points, find your center, and you're good to go. So there's another little trick that I've learned over the years. Now, I didn't come up with this, but everybody has a broken tape measure, especially if you're doing this kind of stuff, or maybe you're new to this kind of stuff, and you just got an extra one that you can cut up. So, I take these and I cut them straight on both ends and this is a lot easier to do small increments and to maneuver and manipulate versus trying to go to big tape measure out this thing saves you so much time you come on in here you find your center point sides see how much easier that is when you don't have to stretch the tape measure out all that get a straight edge or you can actually flip this around I do this sometimes too that's my center See how easy and quick that is? That's my center. Bam. Now I can take the straight axle off without any worries. Oh. So let's go ahead and do that now. So pull a straight X out. Hopefully this thing comes down and does not flop. I mean, I think what we're gonna have to do is.
to go. So the fastest way I can get some of it out is to just flat and cut it.
this is the end result for today for this part one we had the frame all cleaned up all the bracketry's gone all that good stuff our marks are still there so that's good so what we're gonna do now is this is part one part two's coming part two we're actually gonna mock this up we're gonna put the steering arms back on it we're actually gonna set this down um, and see just how low this truck will go and see that if we need to pretty much notch this we may end up notching this may I end up notching it halfway I mean it just really depends on the beauty of the notch is to let this thing sit as low as it possibly can but still keeping the same bumper height the sheet metal front sheet metal the radiator support and all that stuff is going to go right back on right where it needs to be so it's actually going to save us some time down the road so everything went really good today and we'll see what happens so remember to like comment if it's some of the stuff that I'm doing is the only way I know how to do it. There's a few other ways to do it. That's just the way that I do it. If you think that there's a better way to do it, let me know in the comments. If you think I'm crazy and, uh, you know, I try to do this stuff the most safely as we possibly can, uh, let me know. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, like, comment, share. And uh, eventually we'll get this old Studebaker rolling the old shop truck